Welcome back to Bailiwick and Guernsey Shipwrecks. I'm going to take you to a dive site which has recently been discovered and has already got the nickname the Anchor Graveyard. Slightly different to my normal format of video but I believe that this one needs to be a little bit more detailed than my previous. Um, we'd like to get a date for this site. The history of this site so far. A commercial lobster fisherman called Steve Fallais kept getting his pots caught in this site. He had just bought some new pots and had them caught again, so he asked for a friend diver to go down and release these pots. This diver descended down to the seabed, untangled the pots, returned to the surface and explained that there was four or five anchors on the seabed. The diver in shot now is Paul Carre. Paul Carre knows this fisherman and decided to get the numbers off of him one day. And it was decided about two years ago he'd try, when he's out that way, have a look for himself. The day came when he was out that way and decided to have a check. On board was Phil Worry and Jen Worry. They decided to get the numbers into the plotter and drop down a shot. This is the image they are met with. Paul was first down the line and returned to the surface and explained there's about 50 anchors. Phil and Jen's turn came around, they came back to the surface and said there's about 62 anchors. We know it's a number between this, possibly there could be up to more than 62 as some of these on site are actually buried. I was invited the following day, after the discovery, to come and film it for them. On first inspection you can tell all these anchors are varying in sizes and some are varying in type. The majority of them are sliding iron stock anchors. You can get two different types from what I know. Some have got the rings through the top and some have got a new type of shackle through the top. These ones seem to be all the ring type. This to me seems to be the only part where you can still see timber. So you can see some large wedge shapes in the floor. One, two, three, four. What looks like possibly an old crate of some sort of bolt. This timber could also be some large wedges as donnage. The site itself measures about 13 and a half meters by four and a half meters wide. And when looking from above, it looks to be the shape of a vessel. These are the largest anchors at the front, or what I'm imagining was probably the bell. They are seven foot wide by nine foot long. There does seem to be a gap up the middle of the anchors. They look like they're just stacked randomly, but there is a certain pattern to them. As you can see here, all the flukes and the crowns are down towards at this end. From a general overview on the site, we believe they are all new or next to new when they were lost to the sea. On the northern side of the pile of anchors, there seems to be chain. This part here seems to be chain also. The chain is in no pattern, it wasn't in a crate, that seems to be randomly laid out on the seabed.
here you can see chain if you look very closely you can actually see the links in it here 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 it's not very big gauge As I pan back around to the largest anchors, what we're imagining was the bell. I do one pass over above, just to try and give you a rough configuration of where they're fallen. We believe that no one else has dived the site or recovered any of the anchors from what we know. So as you see them fallen here is probably the context of how they actually fell originally. Here you can see to the what we expect to be the stern of the vessel. If it was a shipwreck, which one sure it is or it isn't. This is where you would have found some sort of rudder. Um, you can see a little bit of scale here where a pool is. And this is the extreme stern area. From what we can see, there's no wood remaining here. The entire site seems to be on a gravelly or sandy bottom. We've explored approximately 15 metres all the way around the wreck with very little sign of wreckage outside this area. We have a change of divers now with Phil Worry on the right and Jen Worry on the left. They're getting dimensions for these larger anchors. Tell you what I find fascinating about this site is the fact that there's such a huge amount of anchors in one place and it, it brings questions in my mind where were they going what were they destined for I don't think they were coming to Guernsey I think they're probably from the UK down to the continent um, or possibly further afield but I don't think uh, there's another site like this in the British Isles but I'm happy to be proven wrong so if you know where there is one Please give us the information. Due to its depth of being just over 35 metres, we get very little time on the site. The video you're seeing here is compiled over two separate dives and two separate days. Another sweep across the site gives you a little bit more of the context of how these have fallen. I'm pretty sure they haven't been jettisoned off the side of a boat, otherwise you would have found them in a line across the seabed and not in the shape of a vessel still. We are not experts in this, we are purely amateurs, but what we believe is possibly a barge has turned upside down and they've fallen out the barge in one go or it, they were in a barge and the barge from the action of the sea has plucked out all of the timber or possibly it was a boat that turned turtle with it. We're unsure that there's a, this is a shipwreck due to the fact that we don't seem to be able to find any real evidence of other parts of a ship which you'd expect. We have one windlass on the site um, towards the bow area to the northwest. Also, we do not have any rudder of any sort either, so there's no bands or anything like that, or pin tools, 
or anything you'd expect to have seen if it was a shipwreck. Not being 100% sure, but I think these were hammer forged rather than cast forged. Um, they're more square in, in shape than on the um, cast ones, which seem to be more rounded and a smoother diameter. Some of the anchors in the bow area seem to have had a bit of damage through contact with something recently. Um, some you can see the uh, concretions have been knocked off. Now over to what we believe was potentially a capstan of some store. It is now lying to the northwest of the site. Probably in excess of three and a half, four meters actually off the anchor pile on the sand. This just shows the scale of the anchors next to Phil. This anchor seems to be different to the rest. Check the stock out, just one little small stub. This one's off to the north of the site. Also this is a weird object. We're not sure if it was an old winch or uh, some sort of a windlass or maybe just of something else that's metal. It seems to be a long shaft with bulbous parts on it. I'm unsure what it is. Could be a winch. If it was a barge, potentially this would have been the winch up the front. very keen to find out if anyone else has got information or shed light on any of what I've spoke about so far uh, like I say we're not professionals we're amateurs uh, and fresh amateurs at that Check out the stock on this one. It's just uh, a, almost like a flat plate that goes through the end. This is a different type, a different style to them iron sliding stock ones. There's a few like this on the site as well. No ring on the end, notice. These seem to be a lot narrower at the bottom where the flukes and the crown is. See Phil here just explaining or trying to point out that there's some sort of eyelet, a long length of bar with a round eyelet on the end. We're unsure what this was for, possibly for lifting them out the hold or in the hold. Um, some, maybe something to do with the stillage, we're unsure. Look at the size of these compared to my hand. So that palm is pretty big. Uh, they seem to all come to a point at the end. 
this is the size size of this one this is actually quite a bulky bulky one out of the lot in terms of a uh, diameter of um, the shaft mm -hmm. so we're also trying to look down into the stones and the gravel and see if there's any stones that aren't local to the area it's a it's a big ask really uh, we found this this small anchor which is much much later it's a piece of uh, two inch box section with some flat bits uh, laid on the end we later found out that this isn't part of the site and this was the uh, commercial lobsterman's um, attempt to drag uh, to get his pots back so this is um, in essence a creep so we remove it from the site uh, to cause any uh, confusion Trying to look down to see if there's any uh, ship's bolts or anything like that um, that's left in the bottom. Doesn't seem to be any uh, any iron or bronze or any type of um, trenel or anything like that. There just isn't on the site. Um, I'm also looking for trying to see if I can find any different types of rings on the ends of these anchors as well, uh, or anything loose that's uh, on the seabed. One object I do find is this, which looks to me like a bow shackle of some sort. Um, it's stuck to the seabed, uh, and I um, I didn't want to move it uh, and move it out of context, just in case it refers to something. Paul took a little swim to the 15 meters to the east of the site and found this shirt. We believe it's spongeware, around about 1850 onwards. If you have any information about this, we'd also like to hear about this as well, because we're very interested in trying to put a date to the site with this shirt. So if anyone wants to shed any light on this mystery, how are the anchors here, why are the anchors here, how you think they've got here, or any information regarding the type of anchors, uh, or any of the of our ancillary bits that I've, I've mentioned would be um, very happy to hear from you if you could write them in the comments uh, we'll be very grateful and thanks again for coming on a, along on another dive hopefully this was exciting for you it's certainly exciting for us when we discovered it and um, I hope to come back to the site again uh, with, with further knowledge so thanks a lot again and I'll catch you on the next dive <laughs>